the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. Well, the quarterly earnings season is drawing to a close and several new economic reports indicate caution on the horizon. Joining me to talk business is Bob Williams, Senior Vice President with Delta Trust Investments. Welcome back to the program. Thanks, Roby. Always good to have you with us. So let's talk about what we see happening in the financial markets here in the last couple of weeks. We still see the stock market on a pretty good tear. Uh, last time we sat down, you thought that the momentum would continue. It has continued in about the last quarter. What do you think is driving the markets at this uh, point in time? Well, you know, it's a free market environment to begin with. So it's just, you know, supply and demand. And, you know, right now there continues to be demand for stocks. Now, why is that is what you got to sit back and look at. And the real the reality of it is there's no place else to go with your money right now. You know, Fixed income investments are yielding next to nothing. Mm -hmm. There are so few alternatives and places to go to get, you know, even dividends and income on your investments. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be any other alternatives right now for investors to consider. There is some, at least, uh, general consensus that we might see some interest rates eventually start ticking up that might make for more attractive movement of some money, but that is still a ways off, right? Well, I, you know, I've seen research reports that say we could trend up as much as a half a point higher by the end of the year on both the 10-year and the 30-year treasuries. But again, you know, you're going from zero to a half a percent effectively. I mean, you, yeah, you've gone up, but nowhere near what rates were 30 years ago when so many people remember, you know, CD rates in the double digits. Let's talk about what's uh, happening in this current earnings season. I kind of generalize by saying in a lot of the reports I've read, and I'm really focusing a little bit more on some of the Arkansas-based ones, but I've seen it in some national numbers too. Generally speaking, revenues have been a little bit higher for a lot of companies, but profits have been a little bit lower. Do you have any kind of indication of what's kind of making that general movement happen? Well, on the consumer type companies, for example, I think it's indication that they're spending more money on marketing. In tough economic times when you're worried about business, you, yeah, that's where you need to spend your, your money is to advertise and try and draw in more customers. And I think that gets reflected both in the fact that revenues are increasing in a lot of these mm -hmm. industries and also the fact that profits are down because it costs more money to get those people in the doors. Uh, when you look at uh, some of the big companies, and I'll cite Walmart, for instance, which drives like 20% of all consumer spending in the U.S., which is a phenomenal number, number for me. In their latest earnings report, they warned about some challenges that are ahead, particularly in the retail environment. Others in the retail sector tend to agree. I think we saw some caution with Macy's, caution with Dillard's, caution with Target, and some other big retailers like that. What, why is there that concern out there for potential consumer spending? Well, I, it's a twofold answer to that question, Roby. The first is that primarily, you know, you've got to realize as you grow larger and hit critical mass, it becomes much harder to bring in incremental revenues at the same growth rate. The bigger you get, you know, it's a lot easier to take $100 and double it to 200 than it is to take 100 million and double it to 200 million. So for you, maybe, but not for me, Bob. And me, that's just that's everyday life. So well, I'm sorry, interrupting. No, Go no. Ahead. But, you know, when you look at that, it becomes more difficult for companies to bring in incremental revenue as they grow larger. I mean, you reach a point where there's a saturation in your marketplace. And some of these companies have, have certainly, given the current economic environment, reached some level of saturation and it becomes more difficult to make those earnings grow. So I think that's a big factor right now is, you know, how do you make these companies, these companies grow their critical mass? Do you think there is some concern out there, though, that consumer spending may slow down? I mean, we're in the back end of the back to school season right now. You've got holiday shopping season coming up. Yeah. It seems to me that Walmart has fired a shot to say, be cautious. Well, one thing they've noted in their in their calls is that they're seeing more paycheck spending, more paycheck enhanced spending cycles that they see that when the, and on a Friday of payday, the few days after that, their spending goes up by their customers. And then as it wanes through the end of the week and until there's another paycheck coming out, they do see this sloping curve and a redu reduction in spending by customers. And that is indicative that there's, you know, maybe some concern in the consumer marketplace. 
Let's talk about some other economic indicators, some forward-looking things, for instance, uh, that might give us some indication of what's to come. Uh, just this uh, last week, we got truck tonnage index numbers from CAS um, and from the American Trucking Association. Not super strong, a little bit of uncertainty, a little bit of a mixed bag. Manufacturing seems to be sluggish, particularly here in Arkansas maybe a little bit better across the U.S. Unemployment coming down at the national level, raise, rising at the, the state level. When you put all that in the pot of stew, what do you kind of get? Well, again, you got to take these things and really bring it more down into a macro environment. When you compare us to the region, our numbers are not nearly as r r low on a relative basis as they are to, say, Mississippi or Tennessee in terms of the manufacturing numbers or any, you know, virtually any of those statistics you just quoted. So, yeah, on a nationwide basis, we're struggling here to bring in new manufacturing jobs. There's no question about that. But the whole, the, the entire southern U.S. is struggling for that, and we're competing with each other to bring those jobs in. And at some point, you know, the legislature says we can't afford to fund those additional jobs and bringing them in. So it, it, it's a difficult environment without a doubt. So when you're looking at everything in your crystal ball, what is your general consensus where the economy is heading? What kind of advice are you maybe doing with some of the hand-holding you're giving clients? Well, I mean, expect that it's highly likely that we could go into a sideways market movement where the markets don't necessarily go into a major correction, but maybe they don't go a lot higher. And I think that's more likely as if we see these rates trend up that are being predict predicted. Um, on the other hand, business confidence, business spending confidence, particularly small businesses, is up. And that's a very strong indicator for the economy over the longer term, because that indicates they may be willing to spend money, expand, more hiring. That can lead to increased consumer confidence, which ultimately will improve the, the economy all overall. All right. He's Bob Williams, Senior Vice President with Delta Trust Investments. As always, great advice. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Roby.